Hey guys, it is Christine Vallis, and I wanted to send out a post here of encouragement as we wrap up the biblical month of Savan. It's going to be winding down this week, and um, you know, I often find that God's months are good to the last drop. So I wanted to share some encouragement with you from a Bible study that I was doing this morning and actually yesterday too. And it's actually from um, my very own book right here, um, His Appointed Times. So um, for, for those of you who have it, you know that every month has a whole chapter dedicated to it. And one of the features um, in the book is a Bible study from the New Testament for every month. So as you can see, I am actually using it. And um, this morning I was reading from Matthew chapter 14, verses 15 through 21. And I encourage you to check out this portion of scripture. It's a popular story, you probably know it. It's when Jesus fed the 5,000 from the five loaves and two fish. And so I was reading that this morning and then I was challenged by my very own question here that says, um, after meditating on Jesus's example, what are you doing with what looks like not enough in your life? And are you cursing it or are you blessing it? And I was like, oh, hmm, what am I doing with what looks like not enough? Am I cursing it or am I blessing it? And so I went back to the passage and I was really noticing the words or uh, the difference, I should say, between the disciples' words over the situation compared to Jesus' words over the same situation. And so if you check out the scripture, the disciples start by saying to the Lord that this place is desolate. And the hour is already late. So just send all these crowds away and let them go into the villages and buy their own food. But Jesus said to them, they do not need to go away. You need to give them something. So this was totally um, the opposite, right? And they said to him, well, we only have five loaves and two fish. But that's when he said, well, bring them to me. And then he told all of the people to sit down right there in the grass, basically to rest, get ready to receive. And um, he took the five loaves and two fish and he blessed them. And then he broke the loaves apart and he gave them to the disciples. And then the disciples handed them out to all of the crowds. And it says here that the crowds not only ate, but they ate and were satisfied. So they just didn't have a little scrap of a fish and a, and a crumb of a bread. They had like many servings and they were full, you know? So um, then it goes on to say that the disciples went around and then picked up all of the leftovers, 12 baskets full. And so it closes out this portion by saying, and 5,008 plus men, or plus women and children. So even that, there was enough and extra for all of those people, even more than 5,000. So when I was considering all that and considering this question, I noticed here that there were three areas that were really highlighted here in this portion of scripture and um, were really areas in our lives that come up. And so let's see if we're speaking life or death over these areas, okay? So the first thing is the place. Remember the disciples said, this place is desolate, right? And meanwhile, what, what happened? That place wasn't desolate at all. It became a mountain of a feast, right? Everyone sat down and ate. So what are we saying over the place that we're in or the places we're in or the situation, whether it be our home or that, like I said, the current situation, are we speaking blessing over it? It's important guys, because death and life is in the power of our tongues and we will have whatever we say if we believe what we're saying, right? Okay, the next point I see is the time factor. And here the disciples said, well, it's already late. Basically, they were saying, it's too late. Just send these people home. 
it, there's no way it's going to happen now. And so, guys, have we not heard, have we not said these exact words out of our mouths? We're basically cursing our own time. We're cursing our calendars when we say that it's too late for this, it'll never happen, or even saying, I don't have enough time to do this. Well, you're already um, setting yourself up to fail. But the reality is, guys, we do have enough time to do God's will. Because right there in this scene in scripture, it was exactly on time. There was time to do God's will. The time was now and the time was ripe. So guys, let's speak blessing over our timelines, over our calendars, over our very days, and we will have enough and extra. We will actually have spare time if we start speaking life over our own days. Okay, and now the third point that I see is the subject of resources, right? Um, the disciples say, we only have five loaves and two fish. That's not going to be enough, right? But what happened? That was all they needed, right? Because God multiplied it. Because why? Because Jesus blessed it. He didn't curse what looked like not enough. So guys, we need to do the same thing with the resources that we have. If we're looking at our bank account and saying, I only have $5 and what good is that? That's not going to get me anywhere. Well, we're not going to get anywhere. But if we look at that $5 and say, oh Lord, thank you for this $5. I thank you for it. Show me how to invest it. Or what can I do? I give it to you and I ask you to multiply it. Show me ways to even multiply it, right? And this is not just in the area of finances. It's, we see here it was the physical needs for food or even clothing or whatever, or resources. It could be people. You could be looking to hire someone and think, oh, we're never going to find anybody. But let's not curse our own resources. Let's bless our lives by speaking his truth over it. Because the fact is, guys, that God has spoken his blessing over us. In Genesis 12 said, you are blessed to be a blessing. So we're blessed because God said we are. So let's cooperate with him and not um, go against what he said, right? So let's agree with what God says about us, that we are blessed to be a blessing. Let's not curse the places we live or our time or even our resources. Let's speak his blessings over them, even if it looks like not enough, and let's watch him multiply it before our eyes. Okay, guys, I just wanted to send you off with this encouragement. I pray that it blesses you. Go forth like Jesus, speaking his abundance, speaking his blessing, speaking his favor over our lives. Thanks for watching. Blessings.